just want to lie down on the trail and have a nap. I'm so tired now. Not yet, <laughs> but soon. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. But there was one soul braving the night, one stride at a time, destination in sight. One hundred miles she would travel for those in need, no roofs over their heads. Can you believe? She would run through London. She would run down the canals until she arrived in her hometown. Mm. Checkpoint one done, Anna. That was London section, I guess. It was good. We saw London Zoo. Did you see any animals? I didn't see any animals. Um, but I got very excited when I saw the Wembley Arch as well because I feel like that signifies that we're almost on the way out of London. So, yeah, it feels good to get this one ticked off. Oh, it's 13.1 miles to the next leg. Nice little half marathon. Change into trail shoes at checkpoint two, mini cheddars, mango yo-yo, and a coffee. <laughs> good luck, So, I've done the first checkpoint, and that's what I'm going to be doing is ticking those checkpoints off. So, what has gone is gone, and now on to the next leg. I also wanted to run pretty much consistently to checkpoint two, maybe three, and then develop a run walk strategy. So, I'm going to run for nine minutes and then walk for one minute. The one thing that I found quite pertinent about the first leg through London was under the canal bridges, there are quite a few people who are homeless, sleeping rough. And, you know, it really does bring home the reason for doing this, running home for Christmas, um, because, you know, it's for people who don't have a home like those people that I saw under the canal bridges on that first leg. So yeah, that really um, struck a chord. So Anna has, with the last few miles, really probably the last eight, nine miles, she said she's been starting to feel her right hip a little bit. Um, she's had a history of high hamstring issues, a bit of glute tightness as well, so I think all of the fatigue and the tightness, a lot of it potentially from the pounding on the roads or over the first couple of checkpoints. It probably leading to a bit of tightness through piriformis, a bit through TFL muscle in the front of your hip. So we just want to loosen all those off a little bit before we get on our way again. Feels great. And hey, if you've got a physio at handy, why not use them, right? That's what you're here for. Yeah. Have them travelling <laughs> around with you. Bed in car park. <laughs> So what's happening here? You got a Christmas card. It's a little Christmas card. Very Merry Christmas to me. Oh, it's from my friend Jane. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I'll try and read them out without <laughs> crying. Anna, you absolute legend. You are such a hero and inspiration to all of us. So proud to call you my friend. You achieve everything and more that you put your mind to. Keep doing what you're doing and keep being you. We love you loads. You've got this, you beauty, Jane. <laughs> That's really sweet. Oh my God, and there's another one. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, oh, this is from my friend Lucy. And from my best friend, Meg. <laughs> what inspires me the most is your fearlessness. You will look back on this for the rest of your life with sheer pride, whatever happens, for always giving yourself the opportunity to do astounding things. You've got this twin. <laughs> That's what she calls me. Well done, Anna Banana. Keep going. You've got this. All of your witches are behind you, cheering you on. Very proud of you. You are the strongest person I know. Inside and out. Uh. Right. 
Well, I better do the girls proud then, have I, and get back out there and get to the next checkpoint. <laughs> just finished the coffee, thanks. I feel like a new person. I feel like I've just started again now. Although I have just put trail shoes on and I'm running on pavement, which was probably not the best idea. But never mind, it's okay, we, we move. Um, yeah, it's amazing what a little sit down and a coffee and a little rub down from the physio can do. It make you feel more alive. Clearly, I'm not going to be able to run solidly for 108 miles. I'm not an elite athlete. The main plan is to make the most of the daylight because I've wreckied the bit that we're doing at the night and I know it gets sketchy. Another Christmas card. Another opportunity to make me cry. Thanks, guys. Ho, ho, ho. This is from my friend Jenna and her little girl Suki. Things aren't so scary when you have your friends by your side. <laughs> You're such a wonderful human being. <laughs> Keep on running and inspiring our little beans to be strong and confident women who believe in themselves and know they can do or be anything. So glad to have you around as a wonderful friend and role model. We love you and Banan, <laughs> Jenna and Suki. <laughs> That's really sweet. <laughs> of course I cried again. <laughs> Who do you want to send it to? Siri. Girls. Stop. So we want you to get involved with this challenge. All you need to do to find out the details is head to runninghomeforchristmas.com and don't forget to post all about your runs as well on social media and use hashtag running home for Christmas. I am delighted to be on leg four and I know that there are now only seven checkpoints to go and when I get to this next one, there'll only be six. As a day of moving now turns to the night, one step closer to the finish, but it's far from sight. Head torches come out, while others sleep. One step, two step, no time to weep. When your mind goes to places that says, you can't do this, what are you doing, stop. The natural thing for your brain to then do is to then think about home comforts. And like, you should be at home, in your pajamas, on the sofa, tucked up with your dog. Um, and that is partly why this challenge like means a lot to me as well, because I know that I'm so fortunate to have those home comforts. My mantra for this challenge is simply forward as a pace. So as long as I'm moving forwards, who cares about the pace? I'm going in the right direction. Hey, Anna. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. I've run a bit further than the last time I'd run when I saw you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just. I think it was about yeah. 25 miles at that How point. How are your legs, Christ? They're not bad. That's probably a question for Matt, isn't it? Yeah. There have been a couple of moments where my foot has been like, yeah, yeah. gone the wrong way on a bit of... How specific is it when you're killing? Literally, here. So I think this is checkpoint four. So I think I've got six more to do. Oh, is it fun? Don't, Johnny, don't. It's four. Hello, a little recap for you, because I've not checked in for a while. Um, it's about 11 o'clock at night, I think. Um, I've fallen a little bit behind my schedule, um, but that had actually been the case since, like, checkpoint two. I ended up having a bit more physio than expected, and the time's just slipped. But that was always just a plan. It's not the be-all and end-all, because fortunately, I don't have any cut-off time. So I've just left the last checkpoint, so the last leg was like 13 miles. It felt like 130 miles, um, just really low on energy. And I think I've not messed up my fueling, but that was a real kick up the backside to go, you need to start eating and eating more, um, more frequently. Um, 
Yeah, I just hit a massive lull. <laughs> but I saw Neil, my other half, and Ralph, my doggo, at the checkpoint, which gave me a real boost. Um, hid from the rain for a little bit. Again, spent a bit longer in there than I wanted to, really, but uh, self-preservation and all that. But <laughs> isn't it ironic? Like, hiding in the van from the rain and, you know, there are people out in all weathers, sleeping rough. I need to keep remembering why I'm doing this. Um, and that is to support an incredible charity um, in shelter and hopefully raise loads of money. <laughs> a momentous occasion has arisen. Arisen? Arose? Happened? <laughs> I've just run. I've just covered my longest distance in one go. Boop, boop. Um, so we're at like 102 kilometers, which is like 64 miles. And uh, yeah, that feels pretty cool. Like it's not, there are not many milestones left for me to cover. Um, but now every step that I take, every move that I make, no, I'm joking. Um, every step that I take will be one further than I have ever gone in one go before. So, woohoo, go me! Um, and a reminder to celebrate the small wins. You don't have to run 64 miles. Um, whatever your milestone is, you should be bloody proud because I'm going to be bloody proud of me now. <laughs> Quickly pause this video and have a guess, all just a bit of fun, uh, what you think my total step count will be over the course of this entire epic journey. We're at checkpoint six, Fenny Stratford. It's just coming up to 2 a.m. Um, been on the go since 6 a.m. And the uh, wonderful physio has just taped my poor legs and knees back up. Um, feeling pretty stiff and not moving great. So I've got another Christmas card, which will hopefully help. Um, this is from my coach, Ali, who I am running to go and see now. Uh, Anna, you are one of the strongest and most inspiring women I know. Coming from Ali, that is utterly ridiculous. I love you mainly because you tell it how it is and we do not give one solitary, oh, you do not give one solitary. You've worked so hard to get to this point. You are the woman in the arena. Read this and crack the f on. <laughs> I'm gonna treasure that. I'm gonna keep that in mind for the next nine miles and do as Ali said, crack the f on. Let's go. Let's go. Not yet, but soon. <laughs> this is more like the weather we have come to expect in winter. Uh, it's, just, it's been a really miserable leg. My feet are soaked again. I, I need to um, dry them off, change my socks change my shoes and while I'm at it find my big girl pants because <laughs> I've got a right old whinge on uh, but I think the last bit now basically is um, the same runner running with me it's my coach it's my friend and dawn will break soon and I just I feel so chuffed to have made it through the night birds start to sing Light starts to shine. Morale is uplifted. What a pleasing time. Determination for breakfast. This task will be done. Home is on the horizon. Head down, move on. Good morning. I am in high, high spirits. Uh, there are a number of reasons for this. One, I have had some food. Two, I have had some coffee. Three, I'm moving again. Four, I've made it through the night, which feels like an epic milestone. That was the one thing I was most worried about. Um, the days are short. There's a lot of night. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that's not gone well. But the one thing that is certain is that day follows night. And what a beautiful morning we've got for it as well. I 
I've hit a low point. Get up! You're going to get cold. I'm only saying that because Ali's got swashums and said I can have them when it's real. Low. When things go badly. Um, I'm just having a little sit down on this wonderful path uh, just to deal with the hot spots on my foot because it's my feet that are going to let me down on this more than anything. Everything else is grand. My feet are in bits and they're not in bits they're sore they're, feet they're not in There's bits not actually a lot of whiskers. they look beautiful they look pretty good uh but i also know that somebody who tried to do a similar distance the other week uh had to drop out at like 72 miles because of their feet and that ain't gonna be me muck my words <laughs> Stoke Bruin, there's a checkpoint there. I've got Bugbrook, I've got the Admiral Nelson, and I've got the finish left to do, I think. Um, but we're just, we've just finished one leg and I had a really quick, really quick, quite quick pit stop. Um, my friend Paul bought us coffees, the crew bought us donuts, my mum turned up with Hugo, so it was really lovely. Twenty miles ish, apparently just under to the finish, um, which feels incredible. I've come back from the brink several times <laughs> during this, and it all seems to be down to things like sausage rolls, cups of tea, and some magical physio. I've just done 100 miles. Originally, that was the plan until I actually plotted the route out. Um, I think we've still got 14 miles to go, so this is going to be longer. Just uh, traversing along by the M1, which is why a bit trafficy. The charity element is like super important. There is one other why that I had for this. Um, and that is because ever since the COVID pandemic, ever since probably the world's toughest island race, which was 2019 now, um, I just feel like a piece of me was missing. Um, and that was my like mentally resilient, strong, tough, you can do whatever you put your mind to, piece. And I don't know what changed in that time during the pandemic or whatever, something wasn't right. And I just felt like perhaps you know, I was setting myself running challenges and maybe not achieving the goal for whatever reason, whether it be in my hands or not. Um, so it was really important to me today to finish what I started. Not getting any faster, not getting any younger, but I've proved to myself that I can run further. I'm still moving after a hundred of miles. Oh, the finish has got to be soon. Just had a pretty epic breakdown, yeah, mentally. Fun. You've done so well. You're so almost Literally there. Six, seven miles, so. Can I get you anything from that? The sausage roll. One, two, two. two. I genuinely feel like I'm going to come on there. Anger's got the mother of all meltdowns. I was just sat on the bench on my own crying. So that's a really good shot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm running on adrenaline now. Twelve miles and counting. Nine out of ten pain. Mentally, an absolute head. 
the dark plays mind games even worse. I think that's why I've just crumbled. <laughs> so she ran home for those who can't, for a charity close to her heart. The challenge might be done, but yours starts now. Check the link below to find out how.